Today I'm going to be talking about why I'm falling in love with ballet and what you too can potentially get out of falling in love with it as well. Now I find ballet incredibly inspiring for three main reasons and these three reasons in my mind fly a bit counter to many of our pervading cultural ideals and norms and notions. Now these three reasons I find ballet inspiring are the following. They are athletic prowess, elevation of the female form, in what I am going to call the magic of movement. So without any further ado, we're going to dive into those now. Now, the first reason I love ballet is because of its athletic prowess. Now, in general, as a person, I am someone who loves human excellence. I love when people are phenomenal at what they do. And athletes in particular are very special. Because with the arts, there is a level of subjectivity. It's not completely subjective, as some may lead you to believe, but there is a level of a degree of subjectivity. Um, other people, for example, can kind of fake. They can couch ideas in any degree of words, or they can kind of blame politicians, passing the blame all the time. But with athletes, what you see is what you get. You cannot fake excellence. You cannot fake athletic prowess. When you are in the presence of the greats, you know it. Think of Tom Brady or Lionel Messi. These are all people who, when you see them perform, there's, they are hands down elite athletes and they're phenomenal at what they do. And now, ballerinas, of course, the best ones in particular, are elite athletes. And how do they become so? This is another part of what I love about ballet is that they've become these elite athletes through years of rigorous training and discipline. All right, ballet is not known for being a, a soft art in the terms of, in terms of how people are treated in trainings and rehearsals. All this, it's very, very hard. It is disciplined, and it's extreme at times. And I think this is actually a good thing. Uh, what it has done is created a culture where ballerinas they are trained up in excellence, and you can see this. Their technical precision is phenomenal. And this is something where, as again, someone who's getting into ballet, I, I know wholeheartedly that I cannot fully appreciate this. It's almost as if you're watching, let's say, soccer or hockey, and you see something really cool like some good footwork or stick handling with the puck. Now, these are things that unless you play the sport, you cannot fully appreciate. Unless you know what to look for, you can't appreciate. And I felt this with ballet. You know, I've, I've seen different ways that these people dance on stage, the way they move their feet, the different flexing and tensions and jumps and pirouettes and whatever. Um, I'm able to observe these and I'm able to appreciate them, but I know that technically on, on very precise levels they're so much harder than I could ever imagine. And it, it cultivates in me this um, great just emotion of respect for what they do. Again, if you see a good touch in football, uh, or soccer, unless you really play that sport, you can't fully appreciate when just you're a casual observer watching it on TV. So I think this is the other thing. And lastly, what I'll say on the athletic prowess point is kind of what I said earlier about when you're in the presence of the greats, you know. When you see Tom Brady play, you know that he is dominant. You know that he is a consummate professional. The same thing with Messi. And now there's this one ballerina who's part of the Royal uh, Ballet Company in, in London. Her name's Yasmin Nagdi. When you see her dance, you know that she is a consummate professional. She is at the top of her, of her league. She is perhaps one of the best performers currently living. And to see this, to see this magic on stage, again, athletics, it's not simple art. It's not something, it's not even acting where you can rehearse and do multiple takes. It's all live, it's in the moment, it's phenomenal. And that's the first reason I've really been falling in love with ballet. Now the second reason I'm falling in love with ballet is because of how it elevates the female form. What I mean by this is that ballet champions the feminine ideal. This is important for two reasons. The first is believing, namely, that there is a feminine ideal to be championed, which many people don't nowadays. The second is saying that in this feminine ideal, there are certain things that women bring to the table that men simply do not, that men simply cannot compete with. These are, among other things, a type of grace, elegance, and beauty, a softness of heart, or a tenderness of touch. 
And all of these are on display in Valet via movement, which I'm going to cover next. But in the meantime, suffice it to say that ballet is unashamedly and proudly female-centric, as I believe it should be, and in a way that many arts and cultural institutions today are not. Now, of course, you could say there are male performers in ballet. That's very true. But in general, they play a support role. Again, ballet is unashamedly female-centric, and it champions the female form in an unbelievably beautiful manner. Now, the third and final reason that I'm falling in love with ballet is for something I'll call the magic of movement. Now, the first proper ballet that I saw, it was this past winter in Covent Garden, and it was Kenneth McMillan's production of Romeo and Juliet. That is to say, Kenneth McMillan's choreography to Shakespeare's classic play. And it's a play I know fairly well. And what I was taken aback by, very truly shocked by, is the degree to which McMillan, in his choreography, perfectly captured Juliet's personality. Now I could tell within 30 seconds of Juliet's opening piece that he had exquisitely nailed her personality through dance. And I thought to myself, how is this possible? Because again, I, I know the play fairly well. I, I have a conception of who Juliet is in my mind. And to see her solely through movement express her personality, not through words, not even through, through song, but through movement solely to express her personality was something that was shocking to me. So it got me thinking, how is this possible? And it's led me to come up with this idea, what I'll call the evolution of expression. Okay, the evolution of expression is how an idea evolves through different forms, how it embodies different forms as it makes itself known to others. What do I mean by this? I mean that, let's say you wanna take an idea and put it into words. Well, that's the starting point, okay? You have an idea in your head, you need to put it into words. That's all very well. But let's say you want to really make that resonate. Well, words by themselves, they don't do enough. They're, they're not very fancy. They can be actually rather clunky, clunky, and they don't resonate with you. But have something truly resonate, you can take those words and make them poetic. To show an example of this, I could take the sentence, well, uh, I'm depressed and not feeling great, but when I think on you, actually, and I think about your love for me, I suddenly start to feel better and wouldn't want to change things. All right, that's one way to say it. It's not very elegant. Or you could say, for thy true love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. That's some Shakespeare. In my mind, it's rather elegant and it resonates with us on a deeper level than mere words. So we have an idea to words, words to poetry, and from poetry, clearly we go to music. This is something that, if you like great love songs, for example, they are songs that convey an emotion, not solely through music, but through the poetry of the lyrics. And from music, where do you go? Well, music, of course, is built on, on movement. And you feel that very viscerally in the way that a, a bass drum will kick. You feel this at concerts. You actually feel it inside you. You feel your chest shake. That's where you feel a bass drum kick. But if you're into classical music, you know this as well. You know that classical music builds tension based on movement. It's trying to get out. It's a song. So if I can do this without embarrassing myself, let's think of something from Swan Lake. The do 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 It's trying to get up when it's trying to get out of something. It's do 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 and then it kind of falls back and it, it keep, continues to build on that throughout the song. I'm gonna just make a fool of myself if I keep on doing this, but hopefully that gives a little bit of an example. But anyways, what we have here is word to poetry, poetry to song, song to movement. Okay, this movement is expressed imperfectly in the way bass drum kicks, it's expressed not fully in the way that classical music builds tension, it's expressed more fully through dance. And that's what we have with ballet. Now, ballet, of course, it doesn't have the words, it doesn't have the poetry, but it has the movement. And what is movement if not action? And so for this reason, we can say, again, it took us a while to get here, but we can say in more or less words that ballet or dance is an expression of action. It is an idea put in action. It's an expression of movement, that movement is action. And so for this reason, I love ballet because it's able to convey these ideas through movement itself.
To recap, the three main reasons I've fallen in love with ballet so far are athletic prowess, the elevation of the female form, and the magic of movement. Now, to end all of this, I'll say that, again, going back to movement as the idea of action, what ballet does is it shows us the beauty and elegance that our lives can take on when we choose to act, when we choose to express ourselves, and when we choose to move. For that reason, and for many more, I fall in love with ballet, and I hope this video perhaps helps you to do the same. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.